Hello and welcome back! We're continuing with our video lesson for 1.6 Kingdom Plante, and in this video, we're going to look at the next group, which is group gymnosperms. As you can see from this diagram back here, there may be some gymnosperms that you're already familiar with, but I would just like to let you know that gymnosperms is a very diverse group, and there are more that you didn't realize were actually part of this group as well. So before we go into the lesson, let's have a look at the learning objectives. I hope that by the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the unique characteristics of gymnosperms and also state the classification into four phyla. And if you're ready, let's continue. We'll have a look at the unique characteristics of group gymnosperms. And it's easiest to learn about the unique characteristics by imagining the pine tree. So, kamu bayangkan pokok pine, then kamu senang sikit untuk um, bayangkan setiap point unique characteristic ini. So, let's have a look at the diagram of the pine tree, and then we look at the first unique characteristic. The first unique characteristic is the dominant generation is sporophyte. So, pokok pine yang kamu nampak itu, apa yang kamu nampak di luar, itu adalah dia punya sporophyte generation. The gametophyte generation is reduced, that means it's microscopic in size, and it depends on the sporophyte for nutrients. Jadi, mana dia punya part gametophyte generation? Gametophyte generation in gymnosperms is the, the bunga dan the egg cell. So, it's the pollen that you find in the male pine cones, and the egg cells, the ovules that you find inside the female cones. So, dalam ini, itu adalah dia punya gametophyte generation. Another unique characteristic of gymnosperms is that they are complex and lignified vascular plants. What does it mean by vascular plants? That means they have their xylem and phloem. But there's something different. The xylem in gymnosperms only have tracheids. That means they do not contain the vessel element or xylem vessel. So, dia ada yang sel yang panjang ini saja, yaitu tracheids. Whereas the phloem of gymnosperms, they only contain the sieve tube and they do not contain the companion cells. So, companion cell yang di tepi itu tiada pada gymnosperm. Another unique characteristic of gymnosperms is that most of them have cones on which the sporangium will develop. So, in pine trees, once again, we imagine pine trees, they have male and female cones, and the male cones look something like this. The cones consist of closely packed sporophylls. So, it's a little bit like the pteridophytes and, or the lycophyta that we talked about in a previous subtopic. Kalau kita zoom in pada satu cone ini, kita akan nampak setiap cone itu terdiri daripada microsporophyll. Dalam microsporophyll ada microsporangium dan dalam microsporangium ada pollen grain. So the cones consist of closely packed sporophylls. Another point is that some of the gymnosperms will have thick cuticles to conserve water. And they have needle-shaped leaves. So, sekali lagi kita bayangkan pokok pine. Pokok pine akan ada daun yang macam ni, yang tirus macam ni. Dan dia akan dis diselaputi dengan layer cuticle. Okay, supaya dia tidak cepat kering. Alright, so we're going to look at the cone stuff once again. So, these diagrams are showing the zoomed in. Oh, these are not diagrams. These are pictured. Zoomed in structures of the cones so we have here the male cones if you ever looked at a pine tree and you see that they have these smaller cones that cluster together those are the male cones inside male cones like i said before microsporophyll inside that is microsporangium inside microsporangium pollen grain Kalau kamu jalan-jalan di bawah pokok pine dan kamu jumpa pine cone yang sudah jatuh, yang kamu rasa cantik, kamu mau jadikan hiasan, itu adalah female cone. Okay? The pretty ones that you usually see on Christmas trees, on the ground, in shops as decoration, is usually the female cone. And it's usually bigger. The female cone will consist of closely packed megasporophyll. Inside megasporophyll is the ovule or Mega sporangium. 
So that is it. That is what I want to tell you about the cones. It is just so much abstraction there. Dengan saya tunjuk diagram. Um, next, we'll talk about what the cones do. The cones will produce the pollen, which will contain sperm. The female cones will produce the ovule, which will contain the egg cell. So uh, when we talk about the next unique characteristic, we're talking about those two things. For gymnosperms, the pollination agent is wind. Benda yang bawa debunga kepada cone betina adalah angin. So it is carried by wind. And water is not needed for sexual reproduction in gymnosperms. Because the sperm cells do not swim. Sperm cells in gymnosperms are non-motile. They don't have flagella. And the sperm cells are conveyed to egg cell by a pollen tube. So, pollen itu dibawa oleh angin, the bunga dibawa oleh angin. Bila dia sampai kepada female cone, dia akan bercambah dan dia akan tumbuh pollen tube. Macam yang kamu belajar semester lepas. Dan pollen tube akan bawa sperm cell daripada the bunga kepada egg cell. Okay, so that is how pollination in gymnosperms occur. After pollination, we will have the seed. Gymnosperms are seed-bearing plants. Dia bukan hasilkan spore, dia hasilkan seed, benih. The seed of gymnosperms are not enclosed in an ovary. It will be a naked seed. That means the seeds are exposed on the sporophylls. Lepas uh, persenyawaan, dia akan bentuk seed saja terus. Dia ada buah. So they do not produce fruits because they have no ovary. They have ovule but no ovary. And all gymnosperms are heterosporous. Heterosporous means dia akan hasilkan uh, spore yang jantan, spore dan yang betina. So that that's how it uses sexual reproduction, you know. Um, each organ is either going to produce male gametes or female gametes. Okay, so that is it for the unique characteristics of gymnosperms. Okay, boleh cuba ingat, cuba hafal unique characteristic dia lah. After that, we'll talk about the classification of gymnosperms into four phyla. As you can see from the diagrams down here, the images down here, they can look a bit different from each other. Okay, yang kita paling biasa dan kita paling familiar adalah phylum yang pertama. Phylum pertama adalah Coniferophyta ataupun Pinophyta. You can use either names; both are correct. And the usual example that we use for this phylum is Pinus species. So, pokok pine adalah contoh yang kita paling suka gunakan untuk phylum Coniferophyta. For phylum Cycadophyta, it is uh, usually mistaken for palms, but it's different from palm plants. Okay. An example of organism that we usually use in Cycadophyta is the Cycas species. The third phylum that we'll look at is phylum Gingophyta. Gingophyta, they used to be very, very abundant. So billions of years ago, when the earth looked very different, the climate was different, you could find lots of Gingophyta all over the world. And they had many, many species. But as the climate change and evolution happens, some of them die out. And right now, the only species of Gingophyta that we have still surviving is Gingo biloba. So, biasanya untuk Gingophyta, kita guna satu contoh saja lah, yaitu Gingo biloba, sebab dia sahaja species dalam phylum ini yang masih hidup sekarang. And the last phylum that we we'll look at is a phylum that's a little bit different from all the other three. It is phylum Nitophyta. Dia bukan Geneto, okay? It's Nitophyta. A usual example that we use for this phylum is a Nitum species. For your syllabus, you only need to know 
that we classify it into four file. Asalkan kamu hafal nama file, okay sudah. Tapi sekarang saya akan jelaskan dan saya akan bandingkan sedikit di antara empat file ini. So I'm going to do a little bit of comparison uh, on the morphology for each of these file. So ini dari segi luaran dia. So we have here file coniferophyta, cycadophyta, ginkgophyta, and nitophyta. First, we're going to look on the aspect of leaves. Kita tengok daripada bentuk daun mereka. For coniferophyta, we have these iconic Christmas tree, pine tree, needle-like leaves. For cycadophyta, we have these palm-like fronds. So, walaupun dia bukan pokok palma, daun dia mirip palma. For ginkgophyta, we have these iconic, very aesthetically pleasing pen shape leaves. So, kalau kamu menampak daun dia macam ini, besar kemungkinan kamu sedang tengok organism ginkgophyta, biasanya ginkgo biloba. And nitophyta will have angiosperm like broad leaves. So, kamu tengok dalam gymnosperm ini kebanyakan mereka uh, uh, yang first two lebih tirus. Yang ginkgophyta dia macam start melebar sedikit. Nitophyta dia punya daun makin lebar dan makin mirip angiosperm. Angiosperm tumbuhan berbunga macam durian dan sebagainya. Okay, so that is on the aspect of leaves. Looking at the next category, we will look at the reproductive structure. So this is what the reproductive structure for each phylum looks like. In phylum coniferophyta, the reproductive structure is called a cone. Okay, and the cone looks like this. In cycadophyta, the reproductive structure is a large strobilus or cone. And it's usually really, really big in the middle of the plant. So, ini agak besar lah berbanding dengan uh, coniferophyta punya cone. Phylum gingophyta, the reproductive structure is strobilus, so they are smaller and they look like this, they're called strobilus. Whereas in nitophyta, it's still called strobilus or strobili. Kalau dia satu, strobilus, banyak strobili. Tapi strobilus dia pelik sedikit. Dia punya strobilus berbentuk macam bunga. So it will have a reproductive structure that is a flower-like strobili. Okay, so you can see the difference across the phylum. We're going to do a few more comparisons. We'll compare in terms of the tracheids. Coniferophyta, cycadophyta, gingophyta will have xylem that consists only of tracheids. But in nitophyta, the xylem will have tracheid and vessel elements. Coniferophyta, cycadophyta, and gingophyta will have phloem that consists of sieve tube only. But in nitophyta, the phloem consists of sieve tube with companion cells. And that is it about the xylem and the phloem. Next, we'll talk about whether the plant is monoecious or dioecious. Coniferophyta is monoecious. Monoecious means there are separate male and female reproductive part located on the same plant. So, satu pokok pine yang sama itu, satu dahan mungkin akan ada male cone. Dahan yang di tepi-tepi-tepi-tepi lagi mungkin akan ada female cones. Okay, so that is how monoecious gymnosperm would look like. Cycadophyta and gingophyta are dioecious. Dioecious means you have separate male and female plant. Dalam satu pokok cycad itu, Cycad species itu, satu pokok tu akan ada male cone sahaja. Pokok kedua baru ada female cone. That's it. Same thing with ginggo plants. Ginggo biloba, satu pokok ginggo itu dia sama ada jantan sahaja ataupun betina sahaja. Okay? Whereas in nitophyta, it depends on the species. Some nitophyta are dioecious and some of them are monoecious. So it has some variety there. As you can see here, there are differences across these four phylum that suggest nitophyta is kind of an in-between between gymnosperms and angiosperms. Kalau kita tengok dari segi perbandingan morfologi ini, ada kebanyakan saintis sokong idea bahawa 
daripada gymnosperm ini, ada beberapa spesies gymnosperm yang lama kelamaan berubah evolusi menjadi spesies baru angiosperm. The nitophyta, this phylum, is kind of showing that connection between gymnosperm and angiosperm. But you don't need to memorize that. I'm only telling you because that is extra information. So that is it for this subtopic. Please go ahead and try to remember the unique characteristics of group gymnosperms. And also remember to state the four phyla in group gymnosperms, which is coniferophyta, cycadophyta, gingophyta, and nitophyta. And make sure you pay attention to your spelling. Um, what do you have to do now? Nothing much. Come up with your own notes. And then you can move on to the next video for the next lesson. That's all for me. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And I will see you again in the next lesson. Thank you and bye.